to close the gap, the knowledge gap in the care of these patients. The, the participants of this education day, they should understand the tsunami of adult congenital heart disease. There are more adults with a congenital heart disease than children in 2016. Uh, and 95% of patients even with complex congenital heart disease are now surviving into adulthood. Uh, the understanding of terminology and the line but the physiology and anatomy is less than suboptimal in the community. So during this education day we will address the common terms and the language even in congenital heart disease so that we can properly uh, communicate among each other. Number three, we will address these red flags, common errors and mistakes uh, usually done in the community. The target audience are um, uh, care providers in the community, including cardiologists, uh, also family physicians, and trainees and allied health uh, care professionals. And uh, this education day actually is not designed for ACHD specialists, it is designed for the care providers in the community. That's the big difference. We are try to close the gaps and uh, to address common errors and mistakes in the care of patients with adult congenital heart disease. Congenital heart disease are completely different from patients with acquired heart disease and there are errors and mistakes done by those care providers who are not familiar with this complex uh, patient population which is rapidly growing. And there are red flags in the care of this patient. And we are addressing these red flags, including arrhythmias, heart failure, or which patients should be referred to a specialized center for diagnostic assessment or for diagnostic procedures. Even a simple diagnostic procedure may be very complicated and high risk uh, done in the community. So one of the common mistakes uh, which are done in the care of these patients is that guidelines for patients with acquired heart disease are applied to the congenital heart disease population. This is not appropriate. Our population is completely different. Uh, for instance, uh, patients who are admitted to emergency room because of palpitations, they are sent home. Uh, uh, because the physicians think the patient is in sinus rhythm, but in the matter of fact the patient is not in sinus rhythm. The patient does have an arrhythmia, or the patient has a subtle heart failure. Or sometimes the imaging uh, is not appropriate because the, the physicians, the technicians, and the are not familiar with the complex anatomy and pathophysiology of these patients. Every year we see so six to seven patients in this category and these are errors which could be avoided if the patients uh, are uh, referred to a specialized congenital heart disease sense. And actually there's a simple rule. Patients with a diagnosis or a procedure named after a physician or a surgeon, these patients are complex by definition and they need to be transferred to the Peter Mann Cardiac Center or to another congenital heart disease center in the province. Congenital heart disease patients are complex and about 50% of patients born with a congenital heart defect are complex patients. It means their underlying anatomy and anatomy is complex. The connections are uh, not appropriate, for instance there are discordant connections between the eight and the ventricles or ventricles and great arteries, the pathophysiology is then complex and then the surgeons who are modifying the underlying anatomy and morphology add to the complexity of uh, these patients. So the pathophysiology can be very complex and is very very different from patients with acquired heart disease. There are huge opportunities also for us 
to strengthen the ties between the PMCC and the congenital heart disease program and the community. And we need to find this collaboration, this new collaboration, co uh, collaboration because we are drowning and we cannot see all the patients anymore. And there are patients actually who can be followed in the community in collaboration with us. It means stable patients, simple patients or patients with congenital heart disease of moderate complexity are not seen every year or every two years in our clinic anymore. We delegate the care to the community cardiologist in close collaboration uh, with us. We, we give them clear directions what to look for when the patient to refer back to our clinic. And then we don't see these patients every year or every two years, we see them every five years, three, four to five years. And this allows them to free up the time and space for those patients who have to be seen at PMCC every year. In Ontario, we estimate about 65,000 adults with congenital heart disease. And the number of adults with congenital heart disease has exceeded the number of the pediatric population. What does this mean now for the Peterman Cardiac Center? Uh, during the last 10 years, we have doubled the numbers of congenital heart disease patients in our program. Uh, currently, we are following more than 8,500 active patients in our clinic and uh, every year we see about uh, so 4,000 patients. And this number will further grow. That's a given because congenital heart disease is one of the greatest success stories in medicine and uh, this number won't decline. This number will further grow into the next 10 to 15 years until we reach a steady state. Down the road, the number of adult with congenital heart disease patients will grow. But it is not only the number of patients which will grow, it is also the complexity of the patient will grow. Because our pediatric co colleagues, the congenital heart disease surgeons, they are providing very complex procedures in babies, in newborns, uh, during the first days or weeks of their life. And this is the reason why these patients now can survive. But the congenital heart disease or congenital heart defect is not cured, the heart is only repaired, and these patients will face uh, serious long-term complications when they grow up. Oh, the Adult Congenital Heart Disease Program located at the Peter Mann Cardiac Center is one of the oldest and largest program in the world. Uh, John Evans opened the first congenital heart disease clinic in 1951 1959. This was one of the first adult congenital heart disease clinic. Dr. Gary Webb, a worldwide renowned leader in adult congenital heart disease, structured then the adult congenital heart disease program in the late 80s and early 90s. And the adult congenital heart disease program is now a hub, an international hub for education for the trainees. They can here from all over the world to be trained in adult congenital heart disease. This was a 32-year-old patient who was born with a complex congenital heart de defect. The surgeons repaired their heart, they created the unimetrical circulation. After discharge from sick kids, this patient hasn't been seen by any cardiologist for the next 12 years. Now, here we are, the patient shows up in the emergency room 12 years eight with a low cardiac output and low blood pressure. So the message is, there is a misperception by the patient, also by the physicians, that the surgeons cured their heart, but the heart is not cured, the heart is only repaired. And all patients who underwent heart surgery have a scar, a scar in their chest. Actually, these are patients who should, who should have a regular follow-up by a cardiologist. If you had surgery, heart surgery during childhood, and you have a scar in your chest, you need to be seen by a cardiologist. You should go to the family doctor first, who should refer you to a cardiologist who will 
do a, an assessment. And depending on the assessment and depending on the type of congenital heart defect, the cardiologist will then refer you to a specialized congenital heart disease clinic.